So as someone living with this disease, there's just this constant background thought of like, anything I'm doing, any place I'm at, I'm like, okay, where's my blood sugar? I came specifically to this lab as a type 1 diabetic myself uh, to cure myself of type 1 diabetes with this gene therapy that I saw working. What most type 1 diabetics are shocked by when they hear it is that this therapy will basically make them completely normal. So we sort of stumbled onto this gene therapy thing and uh, we weren't really looking to treat diabetes with gene therapy. Um, but we were introducing genes into the pancreas of animals for other reasons to kind of just study more the basic biology of the pancreas. But then on a lark we sort of got, it, got into this area of actually thinking well maybe we could treat somebody using this. And the shocker was when it worked in an in a autoimmune environment, which is what type 1 diabetes is. The beta cells are critical for insulin. That when they get lost, if the alpha cell doesn't, the alpha cell is kind of like the bully big brother who goes, ah, it's a drag, you're getting killed, but I'm not. But if you exploit that fact that that alpha cell is a hardier cell and it can do things that, that allow it to live, then you can essentially sort of put, endow it with the ability for it to make insulin like the beta cell, but now you have a cell that's making insulin but is better protected. Yeah, it's actually really cool how kind of simple biologically it is. So what happens is we engineer this virus that has the, the DNA blueprint for how to make insulin. We then direct that virus specifically at alpha cells into the pancreas, which are the sibling cells to beta cells, which naturally produce insulin and are lost in type one diabetes. So when this virus specifically binds to the alpha cell, it does what it's evolutionarily done for a thousand years, inserts its DNA, but instead of the viral genome, the viral DNA, it inserts the blueprint for how to make insulin. From there, that alpha cell, which is already naturally in the environment for making insulin, is converted to a cell that now makes insulin. Cures type 1 diabetes. AAV uh, was first discovered in 1965 as a contaminating agent when people are purifying the adenovirus preparations. They saw this DNA containing small particles, so they are not able to replicate without the co-infection of adenovirus or other helper virus. That's why it's classified as a dependable power virus. Our, our lab uh, have, have successfully transformed the uh, alpha cells to beta cells and, uh, and normalized the blood glucose in, um, in the toxic-induced diabetic mouse and the autoimmune uh, non-obese diabetic mouse and uh, and most importantly this we also see this kind of uh, similar success in the non-human primates one of the i think key ingredients to a successful lab is having this kind of breadth of knowledge and skills because this whole concept is pretty far out there you know the idea of doing the, doing a, a infusion into the pancreas of a virus with the carries these genes and then changing the cells in the pancreas based on that. And that's that's not something that any one person would be able to say, oh, well, yeah, let me, let me take care of that. Like, no, you, you, know, you need a bunch of different specialties. This disease is an autoimmune disease and it destroys that those cells that produce insulin. Unfortunately, it leads to an endocrine effect. And, in, and the endocrine effect is that your blood sugar goes awry. Well, I'm an immunologist and I speak very little endocrinology, but I've learned and the endocrinologists don't speak a lot of immunology, but together we sort of like, we're putting the peanut butter into the chocolate and making the great Reese's peanut butter cup. And when we can do that, we have a better understanding together, we can, we can do this. I think our last hurdle that we're on now is just getting that 75 to 100. It feels to me like we're on the last variable, but I think we're very close. And we've shown great progress in primates. Right, so Genprex is a gene therapy company and licensed our technology. But uh, they're very collaborative. Um, in fact, University of Pittsburgh started this award called the Licensure of the Year Award. And we got it with Genprex. That, that was considered the licensure the because they're so supportive and helpful. And, and uh, you know, I think as, as we transition from the monkeys to humans, it's, be, their role will really become quite, quite big. Genprex is a NASDAQ traded company developing leading edge gene therapies for cancer and diabetes. Last year, I was introduced to Dr. George Giddies and his team at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. After meeting them, I was incredibly impressed by them and their research that they're doing in diabetes. 
Genprex had the opportunity to end license this technology from the University of Pittsburgh. Our license agreement allows us to work with and support these world-class researchers. I hope that you are inspired and uplifted by Dr. Giddies and his group and the work they're doing to find solutions to this serious and widespread disease. We are very proud to be working with them in that endeavor. I remember uh, talking with a 17-year-old girl who had diabetes, type 1 diabetes, and I remember her, and her mom was there, and her mom said, would you, would you be okay having, you know, having to have the procedure more than once? And she says, I'd have it every week if it would, if it would treat this.